But we talked about principles unifying a network and an underground network. And it just so happens that Jack Spierko has put together a concept that he'd like to share with you. And since I don't need to tell you what his background is, I'm just going to hand it straight over to Jack. Thank you. So I thought about this a lot and how I was going to handle it. And the, uh, the part of me that's big as an entertainer um, originally thought I would do this like I would go into the character known as Crazy Reverend Jack. <laughs> and I would do this like a preacher, full-on preacher mode. And I decided this actually might be important and people might actually use what I've built and put together. And I actually have a delivered deliverable at the end of this that you can use right now for like things like networking with friends and finding other people and telling people what you do and how you do it. Is anybody in here actually already a member of what I'm talking about? There's a few of us. Why we Okay. Cause what I did was one day I sat down, had a beer, sat on the couch and thought, you know, what would be a good idea today? Founding a new world religion. I mean, we always talk about GSD, right? And I'm like, well, if you can actually found successfully found a new world religion and you can do that on a weekend drinking a beer, well, you've done something, but you know, I wanted to do something a little bit more advanced. So I thought, well, I want to found a new world religion that binds all people in the world by common ideals, basically a religion that anybody would be comfortable with becoming a member of unless they were a sociopath or a psychopath. So that, if the person could be, you know, how many people in this room would classify yourself either Protestant or Catholic as a Christian? Probably a lot of people. Okay. Is there anybody that would say they're an atheist? Okay. We've got some atheists. Anybody say they're more of a deist, like you believe there's something, but you don't know what it is? Yeah, we're always the minority, right? That's me. Um, anybody's a Muslim or Eastern religion like Hindu or anybody? No. Any pagans? You usually have a few pagans. Where's Brian? <laughs> right. But I mean, really, that anybody of any faith or even lack thereof would feel comfortable being part of. And I was like, you know, somebody should have done this a long time ago. It doesn't seem that hard. Right. So what I came up with was this is your entire catechism. This is everything you know to be need to know to be a member of the Church of United Faiths. This is it. We're going to go through it. But an interesting thing happened. We talk about community. So I created a MeWe page to do this on while I was creating it. So I was like, let's create a world religion. And my original idea was more of let's, let's defeat the state and use religion against them so that we could create religious exemptions and things like that. And my crypto mind started going, I wanted my own wallet and all kinds of encrypted technology. And like, no, there's all that stuff already exists. When we need our common ideals. So after my second beer, I wrote all the stuff that you probably can't read <laughs> over here on the right. And then one of the people in the MeWe group took it, rearranged it, didn't change any of the words, and created these categories. God, sovereignty of the individual, and the church body. And then these subcategories, creator of all, freedom to define God, spark of creation, body, speech, association, voluntarism, privacy, non-aggression, private property, egalitarianism, and the pledge. I thought that was smart, so I'm not going to change that. I'll just go ahead and change the order that I put everything in. And so this was a collaboration. And I know some of you had some hands go up when I said, if you're an atheist and then you see God and well, how does this fit you? I'll explain it. It makes sense. I promise you. But why do this? Number one, I believe there are some common ideals that most people do believe. I really do. I think basically we, we, we kind of know those most of these things in kindergarten. Maybe we don't have a way to articulate them and explain them the way I do today, but basically don't hurt people or take their stuff. Who believes that? Does everybody believe not? To hurt? So like literally every hand in this room just went up. Atheist hand went up. Christian hand went up, right? Deist hand goes up. So I believe that this does exist. And I know that even in other faiths, you can ask 25 people a question about their faith and how many answers will you get? 25 answers. And if you go to a church and those two people sit in that church and listen to that same preacher every day, or every Sunday, and even they go to like adult Sunday school and they sit in the same Sunday school next to each other, and they're there every day, 
They read the same Bible, same preacher, same church, same education, still have a different answer. So I realized, like, we all define God for ourselves already anyway. And that happens to be one of the principles. I did begin this idea being nothing but an umbrella of protection against the state. As I started to formulate it, I went, okay, great. That's a good byproduct. This is actually its own thing. Again, as I developed it, drinking beer on the couch on a Saturday, I realized that I absolutely did believe every word of it 100%. And I think that is the foundation for a faith because I didn't say I knew it. I said I believed it. I talk to people often about God and they say, I know God exists. And I said, no, you don't. If you knew it, you'd have knowledge of it. And you could prove it. And then you wouldn't need faith. We have faith in things that we can't know, but we choose to believe. And it turned out that once fully explained, almost every person I've shared this with got on board with it. My biggest resistance, as you might imagine, to joining a church came from atheists, right? It makes sense. But even once they understood it, they, uh, they kind of got on board. So it starts out with the God declarations. I believe that God manifests in all beings, and there is no high, higher authority than God. So all humans are sovereign over themselves. If God exists in me, however I define that, we'll get to that next, then my sovereignty over myself is absolute. Not over you, not over anybody else, just myself. How many people here kind of get on board with that? That you are sovereign over yourselves? Look, see all the hands go up. I believe that all humans have a right to define the creative force, the unified faith referred to as God for themselves. And I respect that freedom exists for all human beings. How many people, even if you don't believe what I think about God, respect my right to believe it? All the hands go up. Isn't this interesting, right? I believe that God is the creative force that caused all things and all beings to exist in all space and time. This is where the, the atheists need to go back to the last tenet. The atheist defines what we call God in this organization as either an accident of creation or evolution or however everything came into being, the Big Bang, it doesn't matter. We're referring to the creative force that created all things, that made all of us, that made everything possible as God. How you define that is not my business. Now, we might choose to associate a little bit differently if we do it the same way or differently, but that's not my business, and it shouldn't be my business. It's the foundation of the country I grew up in that I had to respect the rights of the people next door to me, no matter what they believed, as long as they didn't interfere with my life, to believe what they believed. Because if I didn't do that for them, how could I expect them to do that for me? So now explained how many people kind of can get on board with that. I need my atheists too, like John Dowie back there, right? All right. Yeah. So now, now the atheists are on board with the God declarations. The rest of this is a cakewalk. It's easy now. So the sovereign declarations, these are the ones that make up the main part of it. They're the most of them because that's kind of an important concept here. But I believe that humans have sovereign rights to their body, what is done to their body, and what goes or does not go into it. And I believe that right is absolute. Who believes that you have a right to determine what goes into your body and nobody else should be able to force you to put something in your body? Isn't that interesting? We have a pretty diverse group of people here. I believe all humans have an absolute right to free speech other than to call for or intentionally create aggression or harm upon others. Basically, you can say whatever the hell you want, even if it's stupid, even if it's wrong, as long as it doesn't instigate or initiate violence, or as long as you're not using it to extort, because like I have something over you, so I'm going to threaten you with implied force, and then I can extort from you. Anybody here have a problem with that? When it, who, who gets on board with that? We all have a right to have free speech, right? In our Constitution. Even politicians understand this one. Well, they used to. Oh, how about this? I believe that all humans have an absolute right to associate or to not associate with any other humans of their choosing. We're all here voluntarily, right? We all choose to associate with each other. We pick on some people, like Jake, but we like him, so we choose to associate with him. Does anybody, I mean... Who, who can get on board with this one? We all have, right? See, I'm making new members of this church right now. We're going to get a little preacher in this. Not a lot, but a little bit. Deacon David has arrived. Amen. All right. I believe all humans have an absolute right to conduct commerce or refuse commerce with any other humans of their choosing. 
You have a right to do business with anybody you want to and not do business with anybody you don't want to. And that's a fundamental right as a human being. It is, an, it is brought to us with our creation. However, you believe that happened. Who, who agrees with that? We got nobody. I got some no hands going. Some the ones that don't have their hands up are just amen. Right? All right. Next, I believe all humans have an absolute right to privacy in their own lives and in voluntary interactions with others. Do you believe that you have a right to privacy and that your neighbor has a right to privacy? If you wouldn't go look in your neighbor's window just to see what was going on in there when you weren't invited to do so, you believe in this right. You know, I want to pause for a minute here in the middle of the declarations and say, this might sound a lot like anarchy, because it is. <laughs> but I also want to say, like, if you're wondering if, if this will work for you, is this enough restriction on you so that you'll be a good human being? There is a test. There is a test. What do you do with your shopping cart? When you get done at the supermarket or the Walmart or wherever you go and you're holding on that shopping cart and there's a shopping cart return over there and there's no penalty to leave that cart there like a dick and just let it sit there, right? Do you return the shopping cart? Nobody gives you a reward. You don't get no money and you don't get in any trouble if you don't do it. You do it because it's the right thing to do. If you return the shopping cart and are not a dick with it, you're qualified to be an anarchist because you've shown that you can you can control your own behavior without somebody making you do it. If you're in a place where the store is stupid and they didn't put up any actual legitimate return points, if you're the person that at least puts it over a curb or up on an island so it doesn't roll into somebody's car, this is all you need. If you're the jerk that lets your cart drift through the thing in a windy day and smashes some old lady's car, you might need more restrictions. But other than that, this is all you're going to need. All right. I believe it's wrong to harm others in any way other than to defend yourself or to defend others who are being aggressed upon. Further, I believe the defense of self and others should be limited to sufficient force to halt aggression. In other words, if somebody punches you, you cannot sit on their face and continuously pound on them for hours and hours and hours. That is not okay. But if somebody punches you and you need to punch them back so you don't get punched again, that's okay. If somebody's trying to shoot you, or I should say if somebody's trying to kill you, you can kill them back. But you should try to avoid it. And you should only bring your level of response up to what's required. Is there anybody here that can get on board with that concept? Yeah? Okay, looks pretty good. We're not losing anybody. And I believe it's immoral to take the rightful property of others through force or deception of any kind, that all humans have a right to resist any attempt to deprive them of their rightful property without their consent. You can see where the state might have a problem with some of this, can't you? But you also see that I'm thorough and I write something that's universal, but it's also very contractual. It's like almost like you've analyzed the other side of the equation and you want to make sure when you say you have a religious objection and they say, where is it? I don't know how the laser works on this thing, but right there, right there. It's one of our 12 tenets. By the way, just so you, if you're not understanding this, you don't have to quit your other religion to be part of this. This is an also, it's an addition. All right. Church body declarations. I declare that as a member of the church, I accept that all members are founders and equal in the church. In other words, I am not in charge and I do not wish to be. Please understand that, right? Just because I wrote this when I was drinking some beer doesn't make me in charge. That all members are ministers in the church. That's an interesting little legal implication right there, my friends. It really is, you know that I will always treat all members as brothers and sisters and do so in accordance with the declarations of faith. Is there anybody here that feels you can't agree to treat everybody the same way that we just said that we were all comfortable with being treated? Like, who here's on board with that, right? Who's here, who here's on board with being a minister in the church, right? We've got, got a doubter back there, but it's okay. You don't have to actually do anything, right? <laughs> and, if you, and if you join... If you join something, are you not part of its foundation? Why should you not be viewed as a founder? I mean, this thing's only like a few months old, right? It's pretty early in the game, so I think everybody should be a founder. Now, not being happy with just creating a new world religion and just getting like in a weekend 300 people to say, I'm on board, I'm part of it, because I think that makes you legitimate. There's much smaller religions than 300 people. I went and built an entire website. 
This is my page on it. This is not something you have to wait for. Did I miss it? I did. See, what do I know? I'm just one of the founders. I'm sorry. Thank you, Eric. As a member of the Church of Unified Faiths, I pledge on my sacred honor to make every reasonable effort to comply with every article of the Declarations of Faith at all times. In other words, there may be sometimes we have to, you know, do something we don't want to do because the state makes us. We maybe end up in situations where we really can't comply, but we should try at all times. And that means sometimes, you know, maybe being a little bit clever. You guys know the term I use, right? Status jujitsu. That can be applied to other areas of your life as well. So thank you, Eric. That was really important. Anyway, this website exists. It's called the Church of Unified Faiths. It's at tcuf.org. I built it. Those of y'all that were on the MeWe group, what, in like seven days? Fully functional because WordPress is awesome and they have plugins. What's that? Yeah, and I rested on the seventh day. <laughs> Spark of God exists in all people, right? Um, but this, I, I couldn't really show all how it works, but this site, once you join, is basically like mini Facebook without spies, right? Because we talked about underground networking. How do you get to join this site? We'll be, explain it next, but if you go to the site and you click on join, it says no. It says you have to be invited. There's some ways to get invited. It's a pretty open invitation, but you have to know that. That's done for a couple reasons. One is a filter, but the other is more to keep out bot spam and stuff like that. Like, So all we did is we changed the directory, put it somewhere else, and then linked it there so when the bots come in, they can't figure out where the join page is and then put some additional spam protection in it. we got a pot, spot aside on BuddyPress that hasn't had any spam yet. In like 90 days, that's kind of crazy because usually once a buddy press site goes on, it's like they come like locusts. But you can talk about what you do. You can list your skills. You can put up a quote, photo, videos, audio, and then you can form relationships with people. It's actually more like your homepage instead of being a place that people come to harass you. It's a place for you to talk about who you are. Dot org. We'll, we'll give you a great URL here in a minute so you can actually join. Because right now, so you can't get in. You didn't get an invite. Only you knew somebody. Only you knew somebody. You got to know somebody. And, yeah, how to join. There's a long way. You go to me, we and sign up if you don't have an account. Search for the Church of Unified Faith. Join the group. Once you're approved, you'll find a link to join right on the top of the site. I was trying to make it an invite-only site, and some plugins I used had a conflict. So I just decided we'll just do that little trick I just gave you. Or you can go to tcouf.org forward slash register and you can join the church and you can start finding each other. You can start creating your own groups. You can do all the things that you wish you could do on all the other social sites, but you don't want to do it because they may be infested with feds, right? Or they may be infested with jerks or who knows what, or you may be getting spied on or no, you are getting spied on and your data is getting sold and that doesn't happen here. But this is just this should be seen as a place to initially make connections with each other, to find people, LinkedIn for people that believe in freedom and liberty, Facebook for people that believe in liberty and freedom, right? All of that together, it all works. But there's some things to note. Number one, this is a gift I've given. It's not a big gift, but that's the way I look at it. It didn't take that much out of me to do it, but I don't want to be in charge. If you give something away, you do not control it or you have not given it away. If I hand you $10 and you go out and do something stupid with it, I should not have a word to say about it. I handed you it. It was yours. If I say I'm giving this to anybody who wants it, then you have to be able to do whatever you choose to do with it. So this is now something you can use and put together. Next, there's no 501 anything yet. I'm not incorporating it. I'm not trademarking it. I'm not controlling it. It is a completely, actually decentralized organization. A website's just a tool. It's not the church. There's no building, nothing like that. Now, if y'all meet some people and you get together in your local area and you figure out creating a private ministry as a legal structure works well for you, you can do that and say, we're doing this as members of the Church of Unified Faiths. You don't have to check with anybody. Remember, I gave it to you. It's not mine anymore. All I do is host a website and occasionally talk about it. 
Next. Someday I hope to do more of this on a blockchain. I do want to create ways that we can interact with each other more directly. But right now, everything we want to do can be done with pieces and parts all over the place. And again, I'm not in charge. I don't want to be. And those, that entire catechism is in 12 simple declarations. My only thing I would like is they're not to be added to or changed. But what's done with them is up to you. You can do whatever you want. Almost every faith I know of has sex anyway. I'm a Baptist. Really, which one? Right? Even Catholicism has sex with it. There's, there is a, a thing known as the Ukrainian Catholic Church. You know where it's headquartered? Greece. I'm not going to say any more, but that's true. Check it out. Um, I want to take some questions now, and I got some rules for my questions. <laughs> One question per person per turn. Questions in one sentence with details to follow. Jake goes after everyone else. What do we got? Guys, it's time for questions. Okay, good. Opposite of where I am. My favorite question to have. Qu we'll take questions online in the chat. Yeah, all caps in mine, please. What do we do with violators, especially like the worst kinds? Well, I don't think they would be members. Who's gonna do who's gonna say they want to do this? This is a violator. And since you have freedom to associate or not associate with anybody you choose to, maybe you don't associate with them. Maybe you don't make them part of your group. If you're looking for some sort of like form of excommunication where Jack comes out and chants some words and does some things and then there's stricken from the book, it doesn't exist. There's no book, right? Just because I have a website where some of you can find each other doesn't even mean everybody that believes this would do it. There's no system of control. What there is is a set of tenets that we all claim to believe. And there's plenty of people that you know in your life that claim to believe things that you find moral and they don't behave that way. And you take a very simple step to that. You distance yourself from them. You handle them exactly the way that Nicole said they handle people in her groups. You are no longer part of your note. You don't have access anymore to me because that's all you really control. Now, if somebody you know also says they're a member and they like that person, that's not your problem. And how you handle that is up to you. It's called being a grown ass adult. Anybody else? You see how this works for religious exemptions from vaccinations, by the way? Yeah. Okay. There, there's a tenant for that. Yep, there's a couple. It looks like it works for taxes, too. It kind of does. It kind of does. I don't think you should just say, I don't have to pay you because I'm a member, though. But I don't think that's the way to do it. But I think if you're a good member of the church, one of the first steps you should take is finding a good CPA and a tax attorney. I know there's a tax attorney here. Just saying. I'm not sure if there's a CPA here. Is there a CPA here? Look at that. Isn't that interesting? Roger. Your religious duty is now to utilize these people <laughs> to the full level of their talents. I think that's a breakout session, right? Yeah. Anything online, Hatch? No? Yeah. Well, let's... We're going to just keep ping pong in the coal here. I'm getting my walk in today. How do you see blocking being utilized for something like this? So commerce was a key part of this, right? So that'd be one way. My original idea was that we would create a wallet for church members and say that basically it's protected under religious freedom. We can't tell you who's using it, how they're using it, whatever. And it would also be a privacy coin. But wanting it to be stable long term and not something that we could use to shill off people to basically be similar to lightning in a way, but like a privacy version of lightning. And then that way it would almost be like there's a Bitcoin vending machine. And for, you know, every 10,000 church tokens, there would be one Bitcoin behind it and you could buy them. And but they were you could then they were fungible back into Bitcoin. And that would be an interesting thing. And maybe somebody's build some technology like that someday, basically like pirate chain is backed by Bitcoin. Like 
Yeah, it's like a side chain privacy coin. But I thought it was more important to get this done first. And now I'm looking at lightning upgrades and taproot and going, you're kind of already going there. And I started to realize that the market's progression in the crypto space was anything you can come up with, they'll do it sooner or later. And who am I to tell you which money to use, right? Or which, what currency to use? Because there's definitely money and currency. We'll talk about that tomorrow. And so I think what, where we step in is education. So understanding how Nicole and I can do business with each other privately, right? Beyond cash, especially when we are beyond borders with each other, right? If Nicole and I want to do business right now and she wants some plants and I want some coffee, it's a simple transaction right now, right? All I do is go out there, grab the plants Nicole wants. She has me coffee. I have her handle the plants. Tennessee's not even that far away, but now we have a complication. This is why money was invented in the first place. We need to be able to transact, right? When we're not in the same room with each other and we want to keep it private. Are there, does anybody here know how to do that with cryptocurrency right now? And I, when I say no, I mean you absolutely know when you do it, it's private. I see, including me, I see four or five hands. So does anybody else here want to know how to do that? That's a lot of hands. So I see making this grow be about us being able to teach people how to do this. And who do you want to learn from? When it comes to something like this, do you want to learn from the guy in the polo shirt with the crew cut haircut and the dark glasses standing next to 20 other guys that look like that? Or do you want to st stand up? You're one of the people that said you did. Or, or would you rather learn from someone? Don't put the camera on them. Someone that looks like him. <laughs> right. Who are you going to go to? Right. The, the guy in the picture that says mark all the boxes that have a fed in it or, or this guy. Right. Like that's who you want to learn something like that from. Not even because you can do anything illegal, just privacy. You want to learn from someone that's not like there. Can you trust them? You know, can you trust that person? You know that if you meet somebody here, you can trust them. Mostly. You know, but there's a level of trust that we've already established. How do we establish that trust in people without seeing their face? Nicole talked about business, commerce. If you buy something for me and I deliver, you have more faith in me. You have more trust in me. If I mess it up, but I fix it, you re it's almost worth messing it up once in a while just so you can fix it because of what it does for you, right? But what if we can develop networks that are actions on the network themselves? Like, you know, there's a person here kind of doing that. He wears a really bright hat. <laughs> and to the point where the very actions you take in doing business with other people develops your trust. So we, do we need to develop a fire on inside the church? No, we just need to say church members might want to use Fyron for certain things. And so being that central spoke hub. Fyron.com. Yeah, Fyron.com. <laughs> Good day, citizen. Right? Like, that's, that's where I'm going with this. Anybody else? Including ideas. I'll now let Jake ask a question. Is he here? Jake, do you have a question? Yeah, give it to John. Dowie. <laughs> Now this is where this gets fun. Every time I say Jake can ask a question, somebody else should say, I got to go. <laughs> so Jake and I were brainstorming a little, but this could be a little weird. So they were brainstorming. So it might get weird. Yeah. Oh, it, it will. So we had a thought about a founder's coin, not necessarily crypto. Yeah. But like a, at first I was like, like a silver coin, but maybe on that is an address that's like a crypto that links your coin to the spot price of silver, maybe, which would be interesting. And why doesn't that already exist? But that's a whole different side thought. Um, but then we worry that maybe it would be looking like it's being, you know, we're trying to monetize it and that yeah. would be bad. Yeah, you don't want to do that. So maybe copper coins with a, a founder's coin or like a challenge coin or something might be a cool thing to do, you know? Like yeah. Everybody it gets expensive. It's almost as expensive to produce a copper coin as, as a silver coin. Yeah. It, it, it really is. We can. It can be done. He I wants a done. medal. Okay. In summary, yeah. he wants a medal. Yeah. So when we had our launch party that you were at, we gave out casino coins, and on the casino coin was a QR code. Yeah. And that would be a really cool way to like in person. Oh, you want to learn about a way that you can, you know, bypass the uh, the 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 nano be viral. Yeah. It, what would be cool about that is they are easier to produce cheaply. Yeah. 
And so they can become a evangelistic tool. Because churches need evangelism, right? I think you'd be surprised at how many people would, would agree with every single word on that page. Their actions may not be congruent with it, but sometimes people don't realize what they believe, and it makes it very hard for them to, attempt to, to tune their actions to their beliefs. Those people exist in a state, we use, we use the word all the time, but this is the lesser known version of it, cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance, we think, is when you say, I'm a turtle, and I say, no, you're not, and you get all triggered, right? Like that kind of thing. Or you believe something politically, and I give you facts, and you get angry. Like that's cognitive dissonance, right? But the other form of cognitive dissonance is when you know in your heart who and what you're supposed to be, and your actions don't match that, you 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 end up in a very a very bad state as a human being. It's impossible for you to be your best self because you're acting against your own belief system. But it's amazing how many people do that. They don't even know that's what they're doing. They have no idea that they're living in that state. Anyway. Okay. First, I want to say, be like Corey. Corey had a question. Corey raised his hand while Jack was still talking. <laughs> uh, yes. No, don't be like Corey. Um, I suppose the, the question I have would be, how so the church is going to need to grow in membership and the church is going to need to feed its members how could we establish church grounds to grow actual physical food to feed the church in a way that doesn't attract the eye of sauron yeah. and how do we afford to do this thing um in the in the most how do you get a whole bunch of people together with a whole bunch of money to buy land and grow a community garden on it and call it a church? That's really a separate question. And maybe you don't. Maybe you take a whole bunch of people that hang out in a place like, I don't know, some holler in Tennessee. They're already building their community. They're already doing everything. But in order for them to be a little bit more protected, a little bit more clear about who they are, they choose to say we are an entity under the umbrella of this church. And maybe if you want an actual church with pews and parishioners and a preacher that really thumps it, maybe you form that. Maybe if you want to be a missionary, you form that. Individual groups do this on their own. Um, I think that one of the flaws in a lot of attempts to develop networking organizations is an attempt to tell the people in the organizations exactly how to do it. You need this many people that have to be able to do these things in this way, and then this forms this thing, and it connects to this thing. And people don't actually, it's kind of crazy, they don't really like to be told exactly what they need to do and how they need to do it. So one of the things I think that hampers people with this is it's total freedom. You don't need my permission. You don't need anybody's permission to invoke this faith. Think of it like if you were, if you were a person that considered yourself, I don't know, a Baptist or just a Christian, and you decided I wanted to start a church. You might just get with some people and get together and maybe this little old church that used to exist down here on the corner that's kind of all ratty. Maybe you'd go to the owner and say, we'd like to buy it or lease it and you'd fix it up. And maybe the first time you had church, like five people would be there. And then maybe you'd go home and you would tell your neighbor what you're doing and say, you know, this is a small thing. Just start and maybe you want to come and you would do that. And you wouldn't like write a letter to, I don't know who you would even write to if you wanted to do that, right? Would you write a letter to the Pope? You're not Catholic. Is, you, is there a Baptist headquarters that determines who is and who isn't a Baptist? Like, is there a Baptist Pope? I don't think there is. So even if you wanted to say you were of the Baptist faith, you wouldn't need anybody's permission to do that. I don't think people realize that, that it happens all the time. That's exactly what that church was when it was a church. It was just a community organized thing. So anything you want to do, the question of how to do it doesn't really have anything to do with this. This is just a layer of protection. This is we're operating from a place of faith. And we're fortunate in our country, and many other countries are as well, that there's added levels of legal defense when you're operating that way. And the minute I turn this into a 501 or anything that's organized, anything that has a piece of paper behind it, your freedom to define your entity that just invokes this name goes away. And I don't want to take it away from you. So um, you're talking about the legal benefits of being a religious organization. I feel like a lot of like large companies, governments, et cetera, want social proof of that. Where's the letter from the Pope? Where's, you know, 
your pastor that runs the church. And so, so is that, well, just like, where's the power structure that says this is okay. And if I just say, Hey, I'm a minister of this church. And I say, I have an objection. Where do you think you would get that? If you were a member of the, no, give it back to him. Cause we're up. Where do you think you would, let's say you were a Methodist and you're saying, I'm objecting to this thing. And there's a, there is a religious exemption for it. What do you think the Methodist church gives you right now? Uh, a lot of like, I don't know about Methodist, but like you would go to like the Southern Baptist headquarters or the state of Indiana Methodist headquarters or something. So my question is, could we have some sort of social proof thing that shows that there are thousands of people who are doing this? and there is legitimate? That's actually so, why I built the site. For the vaccine, religious exemption, they require a letter from your pastor saying that you are in good faith with the church, which if everybody is a minister in this church. I, I suppose Preach. you could get a letter from Priestess Nicole saying that you are a good standing with this church. Or you could get a letter from 10,000. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Right. 10,000 yeah. of us could sign it. Okay. Uh, X is up. <laughs> All right. I got a couple questions, right? So there are people who... There, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just going to... I'm going to stick with one then, the, the more important of the two. Um, how do you prevent civil attacks? A bunch of people get together. They start wearing hats like this and going out and doing horrible stuff, yeah. right? Like they're giving out mushrooms and LSD to children. And they're like, we're doing this under the, the Unified Faiths Church. And, you know, technically they're like allowed to, right? Because it's a, not harming in their perspective, right? So how do we police ourselves if we're going to do this? So what do you think would happen if somebody did that and claiming they were doing it under any other faith? The, the majority of the body would deny the association and then the media would say, we don't care. You're still evil. Welcome to being in a religion. That's how religions work. You're always wrong when it benefits the state to say you're wrong. There are slings and arrows that come with belief. Right. I think if we get big enough to have people doing that, we've already solved the problem. Are there any uh, parties or holidays going to be added? <laughs> well, that's an interesting thing. TSP right? 21. So you could, of course, create your own individual church within the faith and then define them for you. I think there should be some holidays, though. I think that sometimes holidays are a time to be sorrowful. So maybe like the date that the Federal Reserve was created on Jekyll Island should be a holiday. I don't know. I guess that would be something. And this would be where blockchain starts to come in. We could end up eventually, one of the things I thought was having an identity token. But Firon does that already, right? But you have an identity token. And that identity token, Jake, be quiet. <laughs> that identity token then identifies you as a member of the church. And then maybe that identity token, token also allows you to vote. And maybe we don't have... And that identity token has you, allows you to vote, but that vote is not binding. It just is a representation of what the body of the church as the majority believes and feels. And then you choose to do something or not to do something with that. I'd like to do that, but that's a lot of tech to develop. So like on the identity token, have like classifications like Methodist, Unitarian, uh, nah. no, just this, and then you do what you want with that. If we have these little poker chips with the QR code to advertise our faith, am I going to start finding those tucked behind the toilet paper and uh, gas station shitters? And stuff? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Underneath your windshield wiper? Give it along with a tip, along with a tip at the restaurant? I have a question, and this is to the audience. How many of you felt something in your life before this, and this is the first time someone's actually put it in words that you understand. Raise your hand. So he's asking how many of you have felt what was described in these tenants, but had never been able to quite put them into words, and now you have the words. That was my hope. Yes. Behind you. Oh. Oh. That was an agreement oh. wave. Okay, agreement wave. Agreement waves from all. 
Anyone else? Oh, we've got Wayne. Crosswalk Nicole. I'm good at it. Jack, there's a, there's a church down in Columbia. There was a church down in Columbia. Um, these guys were making stuff called MSM. Okay. And, um, or MMS, MMS. Yeah, MMS. And I don't know what that is. The federal uh, uh, chlorine dioxide. Okay. Some bad. Okay. All the right. federal government flew down there. They ran a church. They picked them up, and, and it wasn't something bad, by the way. Okay. Uh, they picked them up, and they brought them home, and they put them in jail. Okay. And they had a church. They had all the things. I don't know if they were 501c3 or not, yeah. but just saying that the rules may not be the rules that they are today. Did you notice there was nothing that said the rules weren't the rules? It was a declaration of belief. There's nothing there that says you have a right not to pay taxes or to do something that's illegal at all. It just says we believe it's wrong to take things from other people. If they start locking us up for that, well. They they made a mistake. They were making stuff that made people well, and they were uh, doing it outside the country, and they shouldn't have been pulled back in because in the States you can't do the FDA kind of thing. Okay. I don't really know how that applies here. But I would say this. If you take on any initiative, then who do you need to talk to? Lawyers. I mean, yeah, tax attorney, CPA, but also, like, if you're going to do something that involves people consuming a product, and I say a product, I'm not talking about a duck egg, like a product you're manufacturing, you should have a lot of legal advice when you make a decision about your structure, your location, distribution method, etc. And I don't think claiming religion will help you in that situation. I'm more concerned with like uniting the world. If you get enough people to join, we don't have these problems. Anything else? Nada? I'm done then. Jazz hands for Jack. No claps. Now make Thank sure you. again, if you believe these tenets, that's where you go. A what? An a jet. Oh, no, I don't need a Hummer or a jet. <laughs> All right. That's funny. If you okay. Get a chance to hear that, <laughs> 